I've been waiting to make this a video for a golly gosh darn minute. But hey, how's it going you swell individuals? How's y'all doing? On today's not a tier list, no, 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 no. Although it is still a ranking video, we're gonna be going through all 10 Genshin weekly bosses and determining how much they slap or how much they're kind of just meh, meh, kind of average. Spoiler alert, there's only like two or three bosses I would say are kind of mid. The rest are all kind of fire. They do be kind of slapping. So real quick, let's get into some of that scoring criteria. The thing I am looking for mostly in a boss, if it's good or not, is is the thing golly gosh darn enjoyable? Is it a fun fight? Because let me tell you this, I don't give a shit how plot relevant a fight is. If I am bored, that's not a good sign, dog. Although with that in mind, we will still look at a bit of the plot relevance. It's just gonna be secondly to how fun the fight actually is. Because it's a game, dog. We play to have a good time. Quick little thing though. The main thing I will be looking at is the initial encounter with the boss. Meaning the first time you fight said enemy. Because just as an example, when you fight Devalin for the first time, it's actually kinda hard. Nowadays, that fight takes like fucking 10 seconds. The whole thing with these bosses HP is that it seems to kind of dictate how early on they are in the story because the earlier bosses have smaller movesets. So giving Devalin Arlequino's damn health bar is gonna be the most boring fight imaginable because all that thing does is a bite, scratch, and throw a hissy fit. And finally, the last thing we will be looking at is the gimmicks of said specific fight, as well as the music. These are definitely more of a minor thing, but yes, without further ado, let's get into this. The Abyss Narwhal, the final boss of Fontaine, is a majestic space whale. And although on paper that might sound kinda hype, it is in actuality as engaging as watching a beached whale cry out for its mother. Although I'm sure some of y'all sadistic fucks might be into that shit. This boss basically just floats around while cussing you out in whale language. Its signature attack is body slam, which can one shot you, but if you're moving faster than a sloth on ecstasy, you can dodge this attack with very minimal effort. Unless you're like me and just wanna get this bullshit over with. After a bit of running around, this whale decides it's done with its anger management courses and decides to suck you into its gullet without your consent, mind you. And this is where the real boss fight starts. The generic majestic knight. Now, I don't know what this fucker is doing hibernating in a whale's stomach, but he low-key kinda got some moves. Like he has the sling, he has a bit of a slash, and he has his signature move of unleashing domesticated rabian-fused animals at you, which you can stop from happening with some Fontanian clout on your team. But it doesn't really matter, unless again, you just wanna get the fuck out of there. But yeah, after you get out of the stomach, you beat the shit out of a defenseless beached whale, and congratulations, you have won the fight. Overall, I do gotta say, it's a pretty boring fight for a fight where you're trying to save the French. The inside of the stomach fight was mildly engaging, but the Majestic Knight isn't even technically the boss. So yeah, compared to these others, it is kinda, kinda weak sauce. Numero 9, Storm Terror of Alin, erstwhile king of the skies, is a visually orgasmic looking dragon who is currently suffering from a back tumor inflicted by the Illuminati. We, as a devout Christian, must remove this tumor and bring peace to the land. Now, not taking the super engaging, heart pounding rerun fights into consideration, this fight is kind of mid by today's standards for a first run. But the thing is, back when Genshin first came out, this fight was kinda hype. Personally, as a Toho fanboy, going pew pew on that dragon Usi was kind of a fun time. Although even for its time, it does suffer from the issue of being too fucking easy. But aside from Flight Simulator, you simply have to dodge Devalin's complex moveset, like Bite, Scratch, he might throw in the occasional Draco Meteor from time to time, but that's kind of it. Sometimes he might give the ground some mad snail disease, so simply go zoom zoom to healthy ground, hit that tumor, and that's kind of the whole fight. 
Overall, for the time it was released, it wasn't that bad, but nowadays, compared to these other bosses, it is kinda ass. I definitely wouldn't call it a horrible fight, but it is a little brain dead. Like, I could literally do this boss fight with my damn feet. Ooh, wait, ooh, we, we should try that. Yeah, I'm gonna try that. Number eight. Not me forgetting that Razor's foster dad was a weekly boss. Boreas, in terms of plot relevance, may as well be a Lay's chip in a Doritos world. But what he lacks for in flavor, he does make up for in actually being a pretty fun boss, surprisingly. For early game standards, primarily. Nowadays, he is definitely like a 6 out of 10. You're not quite sure if you want to swipe right, give him a chance. But still, if you open your arms, he's a pretty fun dance partner, actually. He uses a lot of scratches, which if you're into that shit, cool. He might also tail whip you if you stick to that booty, which I have to say, I respect a boss with diversity. Him changing phases after getting some cardio in him is a good message to anyone if you want to work out. Basically, you too will get cryo and animo resistance, which is kind of a mild issue I have, because I can't use Skara to just sling sling him, but still, I don't have that many complaints, it's a simple boss. I like how he can also summon his kids to try to give you rabies, but just stick to hit and run tactics, don't stay too close to that ass, when he does that ballerina spin, just try to run as fast as you can. Overall, Razor's Poppet is a pretty good time, actually. It's not too bad. Number seven, Liyue's dragon is upset because Zhang Dong isn't giving him enough head pads. Ajdaha is an interesting one because on some runs, I wanted to commit toaster bath, yet on others, it was actually a nice Macarena we were doing, dog. Mind you, like a lot of bosses, he has the occasional run the fuck away, he's about to magnitude 8 my ass. Like, this thing is basically if Godzilla was a turtle and suffered from daddy issues, which is kind of interesting plot-wise. Now, this obese turtle does have a gimmick, which is that he changes elements based on the last dragon he slept with, which honestly adds some replayability, because it basically changes, in a sense, the genre of music. We can change from some fiery rock to I wanna fucking kill myself. I will say, this turtle does have a bit too much health for my liking. It's basically your grandfather who you're just waiting to die so you can get that inheritance money. But eventually, with enough colorful colors, grandpa will realize he hates this generation and die. Also, make sure to bring a shield to protect from grandpa's AIDS attack because he might just try to take you out with him. Overall though, it's not a bad fight. Engaging enough gave me some emotional damage the first time around, but now it's just kind of funny to watch that turtle go into cardiac arrest. Number six, trigger warning for those who like Transformers. Optimus McDouche over here is the perfect example of why you don't let your family doctor lace your damn edibles. This boss fight is a bit of an amalgamation, which goes from like an eight out of 10-ish to pew pew pew, can my bullet seed shave that health bar any quicker? Now, I know us hitting a mecha god with a dull blade would be like poking a rock with your schlong, but having the heat of pew pew powers makes for a relatively mid second phase, especially when compared to the, oh shit, this is kinda hard first phase, which is genuinely engaging. Like why couldn't we just stick to head? Why he gotta get his whole fugly ass body involved? I will say everything outside of the fun category is an S tier for me. This sexy opera quartet they got playing is putting their whole diaphragm into this song, making Megatron as imposing as possible, and the plot relevance of a traumatized, homicidal puppet is kind of, well, emotionally traumatizing. <laughs> but again, the whole going pew pew while running away from his pew pew isn't as engaging as it could have been. Overall, it's definitely not a bad dance, but just compared to the fights above it, it's definitely not as fun for me and engaging. Like legit, I would have rathered use a dull blade to pluck away at that armor for a couple years. Or better yet, why not give us a mech to fight Optimus Prime? Like, it'd be a cool-ass battle, dog. But alas, a man can dream. Not a bad fight, though. Not bad. Number five. As an instrumental nerd, a pep stomach demon definitely moistens up my eardrums. With debatably the best composition Genshin has yet to offer. 
And yes, I'm even saying that it's better than Optimus McDouche, for this is what we call an opinion. But yeah, us fighting this tsundere behemoth of a dragon would be the equivalent of an ant trying to survive Hurricane Katrina. So, for obvious reasons, we're fighting the ecosystem in her stomach. I will say, this is the only boss on the entire list that had me crying for a hot minute during basically the entire first phase of the fight. Because goddammit, I love my shroom buddies and them basically becoming our besties only to get sent to Valhalla makes me feel things. All the emotional damage aside, this is also first boss on the list besides for maybe Glorious, give or take, that I would genuinely say, yo, this is kind of a fun time. All of its attacks are manageable, and as a dance, it feels like a, you know, a bit of the cucaracha, with the stomach demon occasionally throwing out a death nut, which is a pep's insta-kill move. But guess what? Our shroom buddies in Valhalla give us a damn shield. Legends never die. I actually initially had a pep in the fourth spot, but moved them down to fifth, and the one thing that caused this is the goddamn intermission phase. We have to kill about 50 of his goddamn children before resuming that spanking sesh. But when the sesh does resume, mm, that stomach demon do be looking quite fabulous. Overall, it's a fun fight with the only slight issue of the little break in between. It's not boring, it's just kind of like tedious, I would say. This is the first boss fight on the list that I would say is really good though. It's a good fight. Number four. Out of all the bosses so far, this is clearly the most fugly of the lot. Signora, the fair lady. <laughs> I do respect that they gave her a makeover after the fight though. She looks much more fine that way. Appearances aside, this assertive dominatrix is the equivalent of a hoe who wants to tie you up so you'll drink her mother's bath water, which does have some appeal, except no, she should kill herself. Oh wait, this fight has to be the most dance-like fight on the entire list, debatably. You occasionally dodge her whip crack, which mm, very modern choice of weapons makes me wanna humble her more. She hides in her mother's cocoon until metamorphosis is complete. And now she's a fire type. Along with the change, she will verbally degrade you more, which is kinda hype. The only slight nuisance in this fight is the you spin me right around baby tornado. But it's not that long, so just chill behind a conveniently placed air conditioner and watch the show. After she's tuckered out, change this chick from a sadist to a masochist and send her to heaven or... <laughs> You know damn well this bitch ain't going there. I hope her hubby can at least visit her in purgatory though. But a fun fight overall. I don't really have any issues with it. It's fun from start to finish. I'm still waiting for Dottore to make this bitch a cyborg though. Just saying. Number three. This ginger hungry warmonger is the perfect example of why humanoid enemies will always stand above the Decepticons. Tartusi over here did an insanely good job proving that he and his cartel ain't a bunch of bitches. This swell lad has three transformations. He is high key, basically putting all magical girls to shame. Mind you, nowadays getting through these three phases is as hard as making toast. However, under certain circumstances, when your toaster is broken, you learn to really appreciate the bread by taking your time. Hit him, dodge, put some peanut butter on him. This whole fight is the definition of beauty in simplicity. He doesn't need to grow to kaiju size to be intimidating, nah, he's a ginger. He never had a soul to begin with. And he also summons the goddamn whale, which I am gonna say that whale should have stayed a goddamn attack. Except a lot of the times you won't even see the whale attack because Tartusi is kind of running a glass cannon build, where even late game, he can dish out damage pretty quickly, but he'll also die at goddamn mock speed. Overall though, not much to say about this one. It's a really fun fight, which the only real issue is the scaling of the game. Top tier ginger boy. 
Number two. I'm gonna be honest here. I thought Dami Mommy Shogun was gonna be ranked number one for a really long time. But alas, she got out Dommied. And boy, definitely out Mommied. Still though, this boss fight is kind of peak Genshin. My only slight issue, because I'm feeling really anal right now, is that A is with you the whole time during the first encounter. So you never really feel a sense of threat. Like you're never scared for your life. But the fun factor of this fight is through the damn roof. It has such a quick pace when compared to literally any other boss fight in this game. And even though her damage ain't the thickest, those hits of hers add up pretty damn quickly. And boy, her transformation is also just very subtle. It doesn't change the whole pace of the fight. It's just that during the second phase, she's significantly more bloodthirsty and is looking to expand that anus. But yes, like most late game bosses, she does have an insta-kill attack, which I am pretty sure is what killed Kazuha's bestie, which I gotta give the man chat points to because goddamn, he really wanted to take that shit. That man was the perfect mix of suicidal and Chad. But yeah, the music is also pretty damn top tier. This fight as a whole also added to A as a character. Because before this, I'm gonna be honest, she was the equivalent of my dog's feces. But now she's in her growth arc, eating Dongo while playing Minecraft in her room. Overall, it's a 10 out of 10 fight, wasn't lacking in really any department whatsoever. Top tier. Number one. I'm gonna say this right now. This is gonna be Genshin's magnum opus of boss fights for a long goddamn time. The only potential future fight I can see rivaling this is the Capitano fight, because that dude just screams testosterone Chad. Now, the Arlecchino boss fight makes you genuinely afraid for your fucking life. This dead ass feels like a Bloodborne boss fight. And boy, I know damn well they got some inspiration from German. Bro, the scythe, the dance, the aerial attacks, they're so fucking similar, dog. Before we get into the fight itself, though, let's talk about some other things. So, the music is top tier as fuck, especially in that second phase, goddamn. And also, Arlequino's voice lines in this fight are by far, by miles, my favorite voice lines out of any boss in this goddamn game. Like, bro, that purgatory line, the being too afraid to be afraid line, like, it's so good. Because realistically, she could have ended your life and her kid's life whenever she fucking wanted to. Like, that's the thing. This boss is so imposing because you don't have a god by your side while fighting her. No, it's just you and some goddamn kids off the street. The feeling of uncertainty here, the fear aspect is so good. It feels almost like a foreign thing in a game like Genshin. Also, the her bringing you to another goddamn world cutscene really nailed home the fact that you never had a goddamn chance. Like everything about this is so good. I can continue to fangasm about this, but let's talk about the fight, even if it's just for a bit. So, she has a lot of insta-kill moves. Like dog, when she changes phases, instant wham, you're probably dead. And don't lie to me, in the first encounter, I know your ass died from this attack. It catches you so off guard, even in potential reruns. But even with all of the terrifying attacks and her ridiculously big HP pool, it never feels like an unfair fight. No, it's fun as heck. Getting those little break moments, wailing on her, then proceeding to run for your life. The back and forth is so nice, intimidating. It's perfect. This boss fight is peak in literally every regard. That's pretty much all I gotta say. But yes, all right, we got a little serious at the end there. But that is it for the Genshin boss fight tier list. I hope you guys enjoyed. This is obviously opinion based. Let me know which bosses you'd move around, which is your favorites. And with that in mind, guys, thanks for watching and have a good one.